Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. This is not the content I was expecting to bring you today, and it was not in the fashion I expected to bring you today. I was, uh, you know, picturing waking up this morning, looking through the news as always, and bringing some positive videos later on tonight on the channel. But this morning, uh, we got the breaking news that we're going to run through in a moment, which has ushered me into doing a, a sort of live stream bulletin, if you like. Um, in regards to Celtic. Some massive news coming from Celtic Park this morning. News that was sort of anticipated um, in relation to one guy over the past week or so, in relation to the other over the past 12 hours or so. Um, it's something that's, that's kind of came out of nowhere officially and it's a sore one. It's a sore one and if you've already read the title and you already, obviously if you already know the news coming into this live stream, you know exactly what I'm talking about, and uh, sadly we're going to have to cover it. It was something I didn't want to say, but Tom Rogic and Nir Beaton will leave Celtic at the end of the season. It's official. Celtic have released a statement on the club website that we'll look over in a moment in regards to the two of them leaving the club. Um, and really sad news. I think that we, we, we can look at both of these players and appreciate the service that both of them have given to the club. Um Two players who have been here for, you know, the best part of a decade now, nine years uh, at the club, almost ten years they've been with Celtic. 2013 they joined the club and now the two of them will leave come the summer transfer window. I don't think any of us really anticipated this about a week ago, to be quite honest. If you said to me a week ago that Beton and Rogic would leave next season, I, I wouldn't really have believed you, uh, I must be quite honest, because I think both of them have played very important parts in what has been this successful season for Celtic, both of them have, you know, contributed massively to what has been us reclaiming the league title, Tom Rogic has been tremendous, he's been one of the most entertaining players in the team, he's been nominated for Player of the Year Award Celtic in-house Player of the Year awards and um, some of the external ones. Near Beaton, yes, he might not be as regular as, as Tom Rogic, he might not start as many games, but he still contributed heavily to what has been this season. He's came on leaps and bounds from that game against Mitchell in the opening game of the, the season, the opening competitive game of the season. Um, we all wanted shot of him and then suddenly we all kind of grew around to, to having him here and I think we both... In anticipated both of them staying here um, under Ange Postacoglu for at least a, a little while longer um, but here we are, we're at the point where both of them will leave and we're going to cover all of that today in live stream fashion, there's over 250 live viewers at the moment thank you all for joining in midday I know it's very unusual for me to be on the channel this early, usually my videos come out about 5, 6 o'clock and we've had the whole day to edit but I don't know, this one's kind of hit hard. Um, I'm devastated, to be quite honest, and I can see the comments rolling in just now. I'll get you guys involved as the stream goes on. I can see that the devastation is running through all of us at this moment in time, and rightly so. I think, a lot more, and I don't mean to sound harsh when I say it, I think that the Tom Rogic one especially is hitting home for a lot of folk. Um, I think Tom Rogic leaving the club is something that we didn't want to see happen. And I'm not saying we wanted Nir Beaton to leave the club, but I think the player that Tom Rogic has been for this club over the past decade, the moments he's given us, the goals that he's scored, the quality of player that he is, it's one that kind of hits a little bit harder. And we'll talk about all of that. So before we get into any more opinion and before I kind of break down each and every little bit of it and, and we get you guys involved as well, I'm going to get up on screen um, the Celtic statement that was released this morning Pardon me, we are live, so hopefully everything runs smoothly, hopefully everything goes well. I'm going to get up on screen the statement that Celtic released this morning. Celtic has announced that long-term servants Tom Rogic and Nir Beaton will be leaving Celtic at the end of the season after being with the club for nearly 10 years, with tomorrow's match at Celtic Park being their last for the club. Celtic manager Ange Postacoglu said, well, we are very sad to see both Tom and Nir leave the club. We totally respect their decisions in wanting to seek a different challenge in football, having both played their part in their success for the past decade. They have certainly made such a tremendous contribution to Celtic over such a long and successful period for the club, and I understand that in their minds the time is right to move on. I am sure they will leave with, their sincere, with the sincere best wishes of our supporters, having given so much of themselves to Celtic. From a personal perspective, as well as being very talented players, both Tom and Nier are top guys who have supported me brilliantly this year in my first season and gained a big role in this season's success. So, 
I think that this was one thing when the news kind of started breaking over the past week when I think that we've seen the social medias kind of allude to the fact that they would leave the club. There was one thing that was evident on my mind, that kind of was big on my mind, is where does the decision come from? Has it been from the club? Has it been from the players themselves? And I think from, from Ange Postacoglu's words, um, it seems to be the players' decisions that they want to move on from the club, which is obviously the right thing to, to do. You know, you've got to let them move on and let them do what they want to do with their lives. But I'm also very happy that it's not the club's decision. Um, I'm sure the club would have tried and I'm sure Ange Postacoglu would have tried to keep these guys around at Celtic. I'm, I'm pretty certain on that. Especially Tom Rogic, you know, a fellow countryman, someone who's worked with Postacoglu before. Um, I'm sure there would have been talks and discussions to try and keep them around. But from the understanding and from the rumours that I have been hearing... Both guys, I think, want to kind of return closer to home. Um, I'm seeing already people in the comments, the likes of Beton maybe heading back to Israel. Um, maybe Tom Rogic will head back over to Australia. They're both at a point in their career now where those would seem like the most realistic moves for them because, you know, especially in Rogic's case, the, the, the time for an English Premier League move is, is definitely gone. Uh, I would be stunned if he was to head to England um, at, the, at the point of the career he's at now. You know, he is slowing down a little bit. Yes, he's had a fantastic season, don't get me wrong, but he's getting older. Injuries come and go for him. I would be stunned if he was to go anywhere that isn't back home. So obviously, I think both players have sat down. They've, they've ended their Celtic careers in a way which they both seem happy with. You know, they're going out in a high. Ultimately, they're going out with a league title and a cup behind them. They've went out the way they've came in with nothing but success. Um, so I think both of them will want to return home in that way. One thing, and I'll come on to this, I, I'll leave this bit for, well, do you know what, we'll go for it now. One thing that I'll say um, in, in relation to, to leaving at this point, these were two players who I think last season we were both pretty certain would move on from Celtic. If you put me in the shoes of Ryan Fitzsimons, Ryan 118 on the 13th of May 2021, um, I would have said Rogic and Beaton were surefire players to leave the club. After the season we had, after the quality they offered us, it seemed like it was time up for them at Celtic. But they've stayed, they've wrote the wrongs of what was last season and they are now leaving on the high of winning another league title. So I think that they've done it very poetically, I think they've done it for the best of themselves and for the best of Celtic and I can only respect that, you know, they would have rather went out on a high than go out on the lows that was last season. Last season was a, it was a shit show, to, to, to say the truth. Just to, to be bluntly honest, it was a shit show. And I think that it might have, it wouldn't have sat right in the minds of both players if they left on that note. So I think it's only right that they leave as champions, they leave as two players who came and saw such success. I mean, you're looking at, and I'll read the stats again throughout the stream because they're unbelievable stats. You're looking at both of these players, as I just look at my notes on the right-hand side of the screen, apologies, this is live, so I can't do any cuts. <laughs> um, but you're looking at the two of them winning a combined 34 trophies. That's unbelievable. Tom Rogic winning six league titles, five Scottish Cups and five League Cups. Um, and near Beaton picking up eight league titles, four Scottish Cups and six league Cups. The only difference between the two of them was Tom Rogic having a couple of loan deals at the, the start of his Celtic career. That is incredible. 34 trophies. And as I said, they would have wanted to, to leave the club on high a note as possible. Um, and that's why I think that they're leaving now rather than last season. I think that Postacoglu, of course, would have had a massive part to keeping them here, to keeping them at the club another season. But I think that it would have been very easy for anyone else to come in and, and kind of get rid of them at the point where we all thought they could have leave, left. As I said, last year, I remember making the tier list video with the boys in the podcast, me, Ryan and Kieran, and we had Beaton in the bin. We had Beaton will go, Beaton should leave. And I think we had Rogic near that point in the pile as well, not for any malice or not, not any particularly bad reasons, but mostly because... He was winding down. He had a poor season. There was not much that I thought he could have offered. But the boy, both of them have stepped up big time this season and they've given their all and we'll come on to talking about that a little bit more. We'll just read through a little bit more of the statements because I've got to read through what the players 
have said themselves. Um, Ange Postacoglu, of course, touching on that, saying it is fitting they leave Celtic as champions. Tom Rogic and Nir Beaton, of course, had their say. They've they've spoken. It's very emotional. Honestly, I'm fighting back tears almost talking about it. Tom Rogic said, I want to sincerely thank everyone at the club and all of our supporters for everything that has been given to me while I've been at Celtic. It's been a phenomenal journey with some magical moments. It's been an honour to be part of this experience. It's been a privilege to play for the Celtic supporters. The best in football I've ever experienced and the great times I have been part of will stay with me forever. While I'm so sad to leave, I feel so proud to be part of a team that has delivered the title again for our fans. The club is in a great position and I know the manager will take the club on and deliver more and more success. Celtic will always be in my heart and be part of my life and I wish the club and our fans nothing but success for the future. Honestly, not a dry eye, not a dry eye in the house. <laughs> Near Beaton also added to it, he said, when I came to Celtic, I never thought I would be part of such exciting times and it's truly been amazing to be part of such a great club. I've worked with some great managers and teammates and I think I thank them all for the times that we all achieved together. We have dominated the game here for so long and now this year as champions we've done it again. Something us as players and supporters we should be all really proud of. After a season of real hard work when many never gave us a chance, we are champions again. The whole squad, manager and our staff were determined to deliver this to our fans. I want to thank everyone at the club and our fans for the support I have received during my time at Celtic and I wish the club absolute success for the future. So there you go, that's everything that the, the players had to say in regards to their departure from the club. Very emotional for the two of them, two guys that have been Celtic men um, throughout the entirety of their Celtic careers. They've given it their all and I know that both of them ha have had their ups and downs. There's been times we've questioned them, especially Beaton. We have questioned, questioned them at some points but ultimately two guys who deserve the utmost respect for the services they have given to Celtic um, and the times that they've delivered here they've been vital to delivering 10 out of 11 league titles over the past 11 years. Um, these guys are, are huge in that. A quadruple treble, both guys instrumental in the, the success of that. Um, so yeah, really, really scary times at Celtic as we see two kind of long-timers leave the club. And yeah, it is hard to not be emotional, isn't it? It really is. Um, yeah, it's a surprise. Let's kind of talk about everything. And obviously, as I said, we'll get you guys involved as the stream goes on. Hopefully, the quality and such has been okay as well. We've got the new lighting and such in. Um, yeah, it's sad that tomorrow will be the last time that we see these guys. It's a day for celebration, of course. And, you know, we'll lift that league title. We're getting it back. And, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's weird that we now have this sort of news coming out. Uh, it's, you know, it kind of puts a dampener on the day, but I think there's also cause for celebration. There's cause to celebrate what these two guys have done for the club, and I think that they'll go out with all the best wishes of us supporters. Um, you know, there's no no bad feelings there or anything. So, you know, it still can be a, a celebration. You know, tomorrow we lift that title, but we also watched Tom and Nia lift it for the last time, and we, we watched them go around Celtic Park for the last time, and it's, it's a sort of cause for remembering everything they've given the club. So, you know, for as sad as it is to see them go, and as sad as it is to see the likes of Rogic play for the last time and beat on come off the bench for the last time, maybe, um, you know, there is cause for celebration still. The news has broke late. I think it would have been nice. You know, that's one thing. I don't know when the decisions have been made by the players and the club to, to kind of move them on or, or when they've decided they want to move on. It's, it's sad that it's kind of broken so late because there is that overwhelming feeling of sadness that kind of lures over the title celebration. But you know what's going to happen tomorrow. We're going to go to the game. We're going to watch it. We're going to play the 90 minutes. The final whistle is going to go. The tunes are going to start playing and we're going to be loving life when the trophy gets lifted. So for as sad as it is to see them go... Um, you know, tomorrow we'll make up for it. Tomorrow we'll certainly celebrate with them. Um, and I'm sure they'll go out in the highest note possible, hopefully. It would be nice to see both of them get a goal. Realistically, it would only probably be Rogic that gets in the score sheet, but it would be nice to see both of them get a goal. Thank you, Noah, for the donation. By the way, you can <coughs> you can donate through the Super Chat section if you do wish to, to do so. Hi, Ryan. Would you ever consider making a members option for your channel? Members only option for your channel. Also, loving the new content. The graphics look brilliant. Thank you very much, Noah. I was trying to get some graphics made for this, but it all kind of happened in a rush, <laughs> um, as it is the full-time stuff. But thank you. I appreciate it. Member, it's something I've considered. I've never been a fan of charging folk to, for my content, but if there's ever anything I can do to kind of 
take it to the next level, then maybe one day, no, maybe maybe one day, we'll see if the hunger is there for it, um, a lot of comments coming in, by the way, I appreciate it all, we will get you guys involved, we'll get all your opinions and your thoughts as we move on, there's just some points that I want to run through on my notes that I have lined up for the stream, um, let's touch on the, the memories of, of both players, I, I mean, both of them have given, given us some fantastic memories, maybe more than others for, for some, but Tom Rogic gave, gave me easily the best day of my life, maybe the joint best day of my life with Lazio away, but that Scottish Cup final 2016, it was my first ever Scottish Cup final, I'll always remember, and you know, I always look at my dad, right, I always look at Stevie, and Stevie remembers so clearly these moments, he'll tell me about Billy McNeil rising like a salmon to head the ball into the net, he'll tell me about Lisbon, he'll tell me about all these different cup finals against Rangers, and he'll, he'll hire George Connolly running through umpteen players, <coughs> Jimmy Johnson running, the, he remembers goals and moments and games so easily, because they stand out and they create memories, for me, Tom Rogic and that cup final goal is that moment for me, is one of those moments for me, when I have grandchildren, God, if I ever do, uh, <laughs> if I have grandchildren, and I have, you know, memories to talk about and, and, and thoughts to share and from Celtic games in the past. I honestly do believe, and I'm not saying this now because he's leaving the club. I've stuck by this since the day it happened. I honestly believe that Tom Rogic's goal against Aberdeen in that 90th minute will be the one that I always talk about. I'll talk about him darting past those tired Aberdeen defenders slipping it in at the near post from the tightest of angles, running towards the Celtic fans in the corner of the park, and then lifting what was an invincible treble Scottish Cup trophy. That, for me, is so clear on in the best times of being a Celtic supporter. That is the moment. That's the one that I kind of put above all. That era of, of Brendan Rodgers and Celtic winning everything can all sort of revolve around that one singular goal. And it was Tom Rogic that gave us that. And that's the kind of memories I will have from a player like Tom Rogic. And it is, he's done it plenty of times. He's had so, so many goals, big goals, Tom Rogic. Even this season, you know, we look at some massive goals that have helped us towards this league title, scored by Tom Rogic. You look at um, massive goals scored in the past away from home for Park st steps up to me last season at Hamden against Aberdeen in the Scottish Cup semi-final massive massive goals Tom Rogic has given us he's blessed us with so many memories that you know there's so many to pick from it's hard to almost isolate singular moments of Tom Rogic's success and, 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 and moments at Celtic and then you look at near Beaton near Beaton as well massive moments the goal at Rugby Park incredible um same with Tom Rogic go at Rugby Park. Uh, crazy what they do, the two of them. Um, and, and, you know, Rogic has got a lot of bad memories as well. But, sorry, not Rogic, beat on. You know, red cards, silly mistakes. But he's done everything in his Celtic career as a Celtic player, as a Celtic man and doing it for the club. And I, as I said, I think that both of them deserve to be respected and, and both of them deserve to be praised for everything they have given this club, um, and the memories will stand out for such a long time. It's going to be sad not hearing, coming on to the pitch, number 18, Tom Rogic, one more time. Maybe we'll hear it one more time, maybe we'll hear it tomorrow, but after that, you know, it's going to be sad never to hear that again, never to hear his name announced on the team sheet, never to see it on the, the line-up graphic. It will be sad to, to, see him, to see him leave the club. Getting emotional here, honestly. Um, let's move on to try and be more positive and, and more... More sort of um, happy about things. Five pound donation from Lawrence. Thank you very much, Lawrence. As much appreciated. He said, "Hi Ryan, it's emotional now, but looking to the future, who will replace them ideally? If you could buy two players, who would they be?" And that's a very nice transition. Also, I appreciate the donation. Thank you very much. But it's a very nice transition as uh, onto what I wanted to talk to next. Thank you as well, Michael Todd, for the seventy nine pence donation. It's very much appreciated. Um, it brings me on to. What I wanted to talk about next and what's next in my notes for this live stream, and that is, is this the start of the summer clear out? Is this the start of, is this the continuation of this new era at Celtic? As I touched on earlier, these are two players who I was almost certain on leaving the club last summer, but we kept them on, I think, for, 
<coughs> my apologies. We kept him on, I think, for a little bit of continuity in what was Celtic... Pa <coughs> my God, a bit of dust in my throat <coughs> or something. We kept them on, I think, to keep that continuity of Celtic past and Celtic future. We'd lost the likes of Scott Brown, um, who was obviously <coughs> the epicentre of everything Celtic was. But I think that Ange would have liked to have kept them around. I think he did keep them around. To keep that sort of continuity between the success that we've had <coughs> and the success we want to have going forward. <coughs> I think I'm dying, by the way, boys. Um, so I think that's why they were kept here and they've kept themselves here. They've revived their careers and, and they've also left on a high note with winning rather than losing. So that was a big part. But also, it is the kind of mark, I think, of what is going to be a big summer for Celtic. I think that, you know, we, we, we know that, that Rogic and Beaton are now leaving. You would expect to see the likes of Vasilis Barkas, Albina Yeti, um, maybe the likes of even Mikey Johnston. You, you, there's a lot of players, Christopher Julian, perhaps. There's a lot of players in this squad who will likely leave in the summer, who will, will move on to, to better their, 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 their careers and obviously for Celtic to better the squad. So, and to bring money in, hopefully. We're freeing up some wages. We'll hopefully bring in transfer fees. I think these are two names that are a big part of this now continuation of the Celtic overhaul. We've seen the introduction. What an overhaul we've had. Don't get me wrong. It almost feels like we are in the new era already. We've already ushered in that new era. But I think that new era is going to continue. It's going to continue to grow and grow and grow. And we're going to see new signings. We're going to see players leave. And this is the, the beginning of all of that. So, you know, it is almost like the start of this this this, this summer clear out, you could say. And, and I don't want to use the words clear out too much because it feels like we want to get rid of Beton and Rogic. As I said at the top of the stream, I think that Ange would have tried to keep these guys about. I think that he would, they would have been useful to his plans moving forward, but obviously the players want to move on. So, But Lawrence did ask the question, and I'll bring his comment back up again with the donation. He asked, you know, who could be two players we could buy? Who who are players to, to kind of replace these guys? Um, voice crack. Um, we already know that Celtic are in looking at Christopher Scott from Bayern Munich over in Germany. He would be a fantastic signing. I think that right away, he's the sort of player you need to sign to replace Tom Rogic. Because arguably, you're getting a player who could be better than Tom Rogic. Now, Tom, I don't want to go out there and, and put pressure on a player to be better than a player who's been fantastic for us. But Christopher Scott is someone who's came through the, the, the ranks and the youth system at the biggest, one of the biggest clubs in the world. Um, and he's also been very good in that level he's been playing at. He's very young. He's got the qualities to come in and replace a Tom Rogic. And he's got the qualities to come in and do it for a while at the age that he is. So Christopher Scott, ideally, is the first player that comes to mind. He's straight away the guy that I look at and go, okay, there's the Tom Rogic replacement there. You bring in Christopher Scott and he comes in and he fills the shoes, hopefully, of what has been a massive set of shoes to fill. But, you know, similar players in regards, they like to move forward, they're both central midfielders, um, and both of them can score goals. So I think Christopher Scott, ideally, is the, the replacement that you're looking at. Um, for, for Tom Rogic. As for Beaton, it's a little it's a little more complicated, isn't it? It's a little bit more difficult to pinpoint a name out that can replace Nier Beaton because ultimately what Nier Beaton is for Celtic is, you know, he's a utility player. He's someone who doesn't start a lot of games. He starts when he's needed and he comes off the bench a lot. So, you know, you're not identifying someone straight away who's going to come in and, and fill the shoes of you know, Callum McGregor's plays, because that's where Beaton usually comes in when we need him in that sort of area in the park, the number six role. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see what we do to, to, to kind of replace Beaton, but you, you'd imagine that we will add depth into that midfield area. You know, we've got Idaguchi as well. We keep, you know, we forget Idaguchi's here. Either Gucci could maybe come in and, and, and be the new near Beaton, for all we know. But, you know, I, I imagine we'll see in the summer transfer window what the plans are from Postecoglou and the rest of the, the club. Um, but Christopher Scott needs to come in now. I think that we have been talking about him for a couple of months now. So it would be nice to see him kind of get the nod now as a Celtic player uh, and, and as a transfer. Um, but, yeah... Aye, general wrap-up vibes was the next note on the agenda and to go through your live comments. That's basically everything I have to say. There is also other news that has dropped. You know, James Forrest 
has been extended, uh, his stay has been extended at the club, a three-year contract for him. There's also the rumours and the news that Ange Postecoglou will be entering discussions with the club for an extended contract, for a bumper contract that will keep him long, long term at the club. That's news in itself that I was intending on making in a video today, but everything has sort of been a rush and came together so quickly that I've not really had the chance to sit and digest it. I've not even ate this morning. Um, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of talk about that as the week goes on. I mean, the podcast would have been more suited for today. We would have had so much to talk about on, to, on the sale at the Thunder today. But um, let's generally wrap up the show. And I'll do that by getting you guys involved. Um, get your comments in. Let me know what you're thinking. Um, any questions, any points? Um, yes. <laughs> what time will the trophy be lifted tomorrow? I've got a bus to catch at Buchanan Street for 3.15. Yes, Adam. Uh, don't know why you're getting a bus at 3.15. You should be staying the day, boy. Um, I'd imagine if kickoff is what? Quarter past 12, first half will end at 1 o'clock, which means the second half will start roughly quarter past 1, which means the game will roughly finish at 2 o'clock, which means the trophy, I would imagine, will be lifted between 2.15 and 2.30. There's my prediction for you. That's when the trophy will probably be lifted, which gives you a small window of time <laughs> to make it to Buchanan Street bus station. Um, but hopefully you make it. Uh, let's get your points, your questions and such in. Forest chat will turn my tears into anger, says John Jameson. It's a conversation in itself, isn't it? Um, yeah, we'll maybe save the, the Forest conversation for, for another day. Um, both players to start them for a good send-off, says Anthony Devine. Yeah, they could both start because it's that kind of way... You want to kind of applaud them off the park, don't you? You want to hear the announcer going, coming off for the last time, number 18, Tom Rogic, and number 6, Nier Beaton. And you want to give them an applause, so perhaps they will both start tomorrow. Um, yeah, do you know what? I think they might. But then, it, oh, that means, does the midfield three then become Beaton, McGregor, Rogic? Does that become the midfield three? Weird. Unless they do a John... Remember John Terry? Remember that? Maybe we'll sub off Rogic in the 18th minute. Or sub off beat on in the sixth minute. <laughs> like Terry going off there, a guard of honor on the 26th minute. Fucking egotistical bastard. Um, plot twist. Lenny steals beat on and Rogic to Cyprus. Here, listen. It's closer to home for the both of them. It could work. Lean on. Lean on. Love it. Um, if I don't make the fight, I'm staying at your gaff. You'll be fucking hard pressed fitting in here, Adam. I tell you that for nothing. I think I'd applaud them on the park. I think I'd rather applaud them on the park from the bench, says John. Um, this dent, this news really puts a dent in the bubble. It, it does. It kind of oh, there's a camera. It kind of, it kind of makes it a little bit sore, doesn't it? Especially amongst all the, all the success we're feeling right now, but. You know, it is what it is. Um, that is curious though. Forrest, same age as Rogic. And why Forrest on a new three-year deal? Well, I think it ultimately comes down, Steve, to what the players want. Rogic and, and Beaton, like as only want to return home. Forrest is home. And I think that, you know, they would have been offered the same sort of treatment, I think, that Forrest has been given. I think that both of them would have been offered longer deals. But I think the two of them just ultimately want to move on from Celtic. So I think that kind of puts the, the, the question uh, to, to rest around why he's maybe been extended and, and the rest hasn't. All the best to Rogic and Nier Beaton. Thanks for your services, says Stephen. Rogic highlight real ranks alongside the Lubos, in my opinion. Wow, big call from Stephen. And look, listen, both of them mag magical players. And, and Rogic is an absolute legend in my eyes. He's given us some, some big moments. Um, Abad has lost his da. Yes, he has indeed. Um, it's, it's a shame that we kind of friendship is going to have to end, isn't it? For now, you know, I'm sure they'll, I'm sure they'll remain friends, but it's Celtic it's going to have to, to end. Sean Fernand said he wanted to offer them contracts, but they want to move closer to home, plus Rogic's visa is up. I need to do some reading into the technicalities surrounding everything else. Scary to think that McGregor and Forrest are the only ones left from them, but that's it, isn't it? It's dropping like flies, the numbers. Um, actually, let's do something quite, let's do something here. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm ducking down. Let's do something interesting to end the stream. Um, God, I can't. I can barely fucking type. Uh, I said earlier on. I said the 2016 Scottish Cup final. It's the 2017 Scottish Cup final. My apologies. Uh, let's get the lineups on screen now. Um, let's do something interesting, and I'll take a couple more questions to end it off. So let's quickly open up this tab on my screen. This was the team. From the Scottish Cup final in 2017. Look at the starting 11. One guy left in the starting 11. 
Craig Gordon, Hearts, Mikael Lustig, uh, back in Sweden, isn't he? Jo Jose Semenovic, don't even know where he is right now. Dedrick Boyata, over at Hertha Berlin, Tierney at Arsenal. McGregor, the captain of the club now. Brown, uh, manager of Fleetwood. Stuart Armstrong at Southampton. Patrick Roberts at Sunderland. Lee Griffiths, just eat driver. Scott Sinclair, just left Preston. And you look on the bench, Nir Beaton, who'll be leaving the club. Tom Rogic, who'll be leaving the club. Moussa Dembele at Lyon. Christian Gamboa at Bochum over in the Bundesliga. Doris de Vries retired. Eric Sviatchenko at Michelin. And James Forrest at the club. That's crazy. Brendan Rodgers, of course, at Leicester. That is scary. That was only five years ago. And the changes we have gone through are unbelievable. As I said, the best day of my life. But the changes are absolutely terrifying. Um, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Scary stuff. Same as me, Sean. That's the thing. Let, let me just run over the stats very quickly, end it off. Tom Rogic, 271 appearances at Celtic. 46 goals, 49 assists. Made his debut against Inverness uh, on the 9th of February 2013. Near beat on. 269 appearances, 14 goals joined in 2013 as well, the same summer. Made his debut against AC Milan in the European Cup, the Champions League. And wow. They're just gone like that. Scary, isn't it? Scary. Right, that'll do it for now. There may be a double upload. There might be a video later on um, with a preview as uh, into tomorrow's game. But we'll see. I've got an essay to finish and all the rest of it. So, yeah, I've been going for a long time. 500 viewers. Thank you very much. Thank you for the donations. Thank you for your comments. It is much appreciated. But I'm going to end it there. Have a good day, ladies and gentlemen. And try your best not to cry yourselves to sleep this evening. Enjoy.